rat a tat tat boom and all that hullabaloo. Hello and welcome to a review of a brand new 2019 motor bicycle which looks like it is from the 1940s. See how I tinker with my motor bicycle. Tinker, 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 tinker. What are you doing? I'm tinkering with my motor bicycle. Well, stop being an idiot. We've got a review to do. Oh, all right, sorry, I'll get this crap off and we'll get cracking. Crack. <laughs> This bike is a special edition with only 200 being made and only five in the UK. And I have the last one. It is a French Chinese mix which shares part of its name with a 70s American sitcom. It is the MASH Force 400. <laughs> The Force 400 uses the same Honda-derived air-cooled engine as the MASH 400 Cafe, Scrambler and Roadster, developing 28 horsepower and 23 pounds-feet of torque. Now, this engine is a twin-port single-cylinder 4T4 valve with a dry sump. Now, the advantage of it being dry sump is that the oil is not stored at the bottom of the engine, it's stored here, separate away from the main gubbins of the engine. Now, the advantage of that is that it's supposed to reduce drag on the drive, increase handling because of the lower centre of gravity, and increased horsepower. Brakes are ABS with a 280mm front disc and a 220mm rear. There are right way up forks on the front, twin shocks on the rear, and a springy seat. The tank holds 13 litres and the bike weighs in at 163 kilos. Measuring up at 2.18 metres long, 820 millimetres wide and 1.1 metres tall. With a seat height of 820 millimetres. Tyres are made by Timson with a 120 on the front and a 130 on the rear. With a nice retro modern tread pattern. Looks wise it is brilliant. What do you like? Yes, I do. <laughs> See, we like it. I, however, do not... Mm, I don't know if I like the text message I just got or the mash on the tank. Very unprofessional, I do apologise, but we're not doing it again. I like the mash, just not the stars underneath it. Well, I know it's reminiscent of the, the MASH programme, although they've got the stars in between the letters, and it's got that army style. I just don't know if I like it, and it's a bit stickery. It'd be better if they'd have got stencils and sprayed that on. Mm. That would have been pucker. Oh, did I really say pucker? I apologise for that. I do like a pucker pie. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, I love the seat, I love the overall look, the exhausts are a little bit quiet and you will be hearing them very soon. We might be able to change that, at a later date of course, I'm going to ride it first. Um, other than that, I love this, although that will change with my numbers and letters on. That's going to be a later date as well. Does that apparently refer to something? Uh, apparently, isn't, isn't this something off the, the, the bike in the programme mash, I think? Maybe, I don't know. No, no. 
If you're a fan of MASH, please write to us at I'm a fan of MASH and I love you guys at <laughs> uh, Murders for the Masses, um, England. Um, the Horn is also oh, awesome, yeah. which uh, we will hear very soon also. In fact, let's fire it up and blow, blow the horn now, shall we? You want to blow the horn? Let's blow the horn. Blow the horn. You ready the horn's going to gonna the be horn? blowed on our microphones here, not on the boom mic, so... Go on. <laughs> <laughs> right, start it up. That's pretty loud. <laughs> It's not overly quiet, but it's... <laughs> the horn is ten times louder than the exhausts. <laughs> the exhaust need to make a... An old cracking, a cracking noise. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do is um, fettle with that at a later date, and that will be louder for sure. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> By the way, for the exhaust, I blame Europe. Bloody Europe! Political, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> however, there is something else. This dash, however nice it may be, I'm sorry, for this style of bike, it should be analog, not digital. So then, Malk, what don't you like about it? Well, yes. OK. Um, could you expand a little bit more on, hmm, yes, because you said, hmm, yes, for things you do like and, hmm, yes, for things you don't like? Indeed, you are correct. <laughs> yes, expand. <laughs> well, I don't dislike it, but I don't like it. Why don't you like it? I just don't. I don't like the riding position. It's just that little bit too high. So when your feet are on the floor, it's, oh, it's just a bit too high. I, th I, think, I think you're trying to compare it with modern motorcycles. It's designed as a 1940s motorcycle. No, I understand that. And Thus, there are, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. <laughs> there are, there are good, good things and bad things, pros and cons for, for everything on it. Well, I love it. And it's my bike. So shut it. Brilliant. But I'll be the one that probably has to service it. <laughs> and I already know that changing the oil is a pain in the backside. Why? Because of that stupid dry sump thing. It's easy to get to. Yeah, but it's hard to fill it up. Yeah, but that's not an issue for you, master craftsman that you are. I did one the other day and it was a nightmare. Was it? Yeah. OK. But did it take... How much longer did it take than traditional drainage and filling? Like four times longer. So ten minutes instead of two? No, a bit more than that, but it's just annoying. You fill up the oil tank, and then you have to start it to get it to go round where it's got to go, and then you have to fill it up some more, and then you end up overfilling the funnel, and it goes everywhere. It's just a yes, mess. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get on to the good bits. Right. Um, please bear in mind that we have moved these indicators. They were up there. Chris, however, has made a bracket thusly for the indicators here, and why is that? Well, being a bike of mine, it isn't going to be standard. It's been modified. Why is that, I hear you ask? Well, what can you get for these, Malcolm? Well, you can get a fuel can and a bag that go on the sides here with brackets, and all of that will cost you more than £350. And I thought, no, it bloody won't. No. <laughs> so we got some metal and some paint and made our own. Yes, we did. Cue the music. That's your bit. Yo, cue, mu cue the music.
So here they are, a bag and a can. And here it is, all together. And I think it looks fantastic. And as you say, a lot cheaper than 350 quid. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Malcolm has made these brackets on his own whilst I was filming and running the shop. So, yep. brilliant job, Mal. Well done. Thank you very much. So you may have noticed that this actually has a rear foot peg here somewhere. There we go. There's one on this side as well. That's because you can actually get a seat that goes on here. It's also a springy, springy seat. I believe we'll have a picture for it. It's got a little handle on it. Yeah. Like a little horse riding seat. Yeah. Pictured here. Now, based on the price of the racking and the bottle and bag for these, the seat is available for a, the mere price of four and a half million pounds. And you can also get a tank strap here, which is the same colour as these, which are Velcro. I wish I'd left them off, to be honest. But um, the strap with bullet um, uh, uh, holders in comes at just three and a half million pounds. And chances of you putting bullets in it are pretty slim, so maybe packets of Mentos or something. Yeah, I mean, not really. I mean, they're like 80 and 80 quid or something like that, but they're still expensive for what it is. And I don't really like that bullet strap thing. And the seat is all right, but I don't think I'll need it. If I do, I'll buy one. <gasps> we could make one. We could just get something off something else and just belt it on. Just there. get another one of these and stick it on that. Problem solved. Well, that's probably 80 quid. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. The seat off our bobber. There you go. Problem solved. All you need now is a bungee to strap someone on. Problem solved indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise for the ambient noises. There is a bell end doing bell end stuff in a van outside. I suspect it's actually a crane putting something Don't care, on it's annoying.
there you go. It's absolutely brilliant to ride. You get loads of looks. People obviously think it's a 1940s bike. And I even saw one person a bit confused in my mirror. I could see him looking as if to go, why is it on a 69 plate? So it obviously does its job. And that is one thing very pleasing. Something that's not quite so pleasing is it's a little bit bouncy on the front end. When you're riding along, you get a little bit of bounce on the front end. But as far as I'm concerned, it adds to the atmosphere of the bike or the ambiance of the uh, riding experience, shall we say. Hmm. So I'm not actually that bothered. You have to remember, this is not a sports bike. I'm not riding the Triumph Speed Triple. I'm not riding anything that's designed to be a typical road bike. It's a theme bike. It's an army-based bike. The tyres are meant for that. The ride is meant to be army-like, I think. Mm. Uh, yes, it has its foibles, that being one little one. Um, I don't think there's any others. The engine's quite smooth. I got up to a number that has a 7 in front on the dual carriageway with ease. And I wasn't going to thrash it because obviously it's done zero miles when we got it. Um, other than that, the seat's actually really comfortable. A little bit bouncy on the back roads there, but again, adds to the ambiance of the riding experience. Um, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's not going not gonna to be for everybody, but it's definitely for me. Is it for you? Um, no. No, it's not. OK. What don't you like about the ride? I'm not overly keen on the, the seat position, the height of the seat. I don't really like the positioning of the handlebars and everything. So no, they are quite low in comparison, yeah. but as I say, I think they've done the theme superbly. It does look good, doesn't it? It does. It looks good and it yeah. feels, you do feel like you're riding an old army bike. That's the thing. And I think that's why they've nailed it because they haven't got, we all know MASH can make decent road bikes. We've seen the Roadster, we've seen the Scrambler, um, the, the Cafe Racer feels like a Cafe Racer. They, that's what they do. They nail the style of bike it is right on the head. Mm. I think that's yep. what they've done well. You know, they've gone for a 40 style bike. They know it's going to ride quirkily, shall we say? <laughs> good, good descriptive word. And it does. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. You get a little bit of buffeting <laughs> when when I'm sitting behind the truck and I pull out and you get a little bit of buffeting at 70 mile an hour. But um, that's probably again, just the air turbulence off the back yeah, of the truck more than anything. It, it's not a problem. I don't think I'm going to. I didn't think I was going to fall off it. That's for sure. And I didn't, for that matter. I just <laughs> had that. <laughs> That sentence might have implied I did, mm. but I didn't. No. But what I mean is I didn't feel as I was going to, so that was good. So if you want a 1940s style new 400cc bike... You can't have one, because they're all gone. This was the last one. I think I saw another one for sale somewhere. Yeah, I but, in a shop somewhere, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, this one obviously has been customised and modified to my specification by him. Very well indeed, I think. Splendid. I mean, they didn't fall off, and we went off-road, on-road, 70 mile an hour, never moved. Yeah, Perfect. That's good. Um, if you do want one, then this one could be persuaded to be for sale. Um, the price is £4,699 on the road, and it does come with a two-year parts and labour warranty. We have heard there is a desert-style bike coming next year. Yes, so obviously we'll be getting hold of one of those and reviewing that as well. Perhaps you could have a... No, you don't like him. Oh, that'd we'll, be pretty we'll cool. See. An we'll army see. one and a desert one. Yeah, for, for the sake of going to shows and uh, presents. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. So, with the price being said, 4699 on the road, you can get the Royal Enfield Bullet Classic in a military style. That's a 500cc. However, that also has 27 or 28 horsepower. So pretty much the same. And that's a 500. And it is a 498cc. Price for that is the same. 4699 on the road. However, that, again, a bit military looking, it's got a chrome exhaust. Mm. And I think looks-wise, in fact, I'm going to sling a picture up of one here. Now, as you can see by that, I don't think it's quite as nailed as this. I think this looks so much nicer. I think I'd want to wrap that exhaust in something. Yeah, that just doesn't look right. No. A chrome exhaust on a military-style bike, that's just... It's going to give you away, isn't it? Let's be honest. 
<laughs> Oi, pull that light out. I can't make the exhaust. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, anyway, as I said before, MASH, I think, have definitely nailed it with the looks and the bikeability, to be honest, because it's, it goes with what the style of the bike is. Mm. So, well done, MASH. And thank you, and I'm going to enjoy riding this. Yeah. I might look a bell end, but um, that's, by the way, what the tash is for. This is coming off tonight. I feel like I'm in a 1970s porn movie. I'd like to get know. several I shops it, this morning I to run some errands. <laughs> really? Yeah. Right, less said about that, the better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm losing my ability to uh, kneel. So Yeah, my, my feet have gone completely to sleep. So that's it for this episode. Please join us next time when we'll be back with the bike you saw at the beginning of this video. Mm. And we're not going to tell you what it is. If you can tell us what it is, great. Have a guess. But if not, we'll be back with that next time. So thank you very much for joining us. Please don't forget to click subscribe and the little bell and like and share and all that gubbins. Don't forget we've got our shop. I'm going to talk this time so you can shut up. Our shop link downstairs. Downstairs? Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Below. There. It's down there. Have a look. There it is. And Patreon. And mum. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye-bye. God, fuck. I had to move several times. I couldn't do it. It's like, oh, oh, oh. I feel like I was born in the 40s. Oh, God. Oh.